Well, as promised, back with another Christmas holiday concert for you. And uh, we've talked about this wonderful organization in the past, 13 Strings. They've been on the show many times. They put many performances on throughout the year. And, of course, this time of year is no different. Here to tell us about their latest concert, I'm join joined by Sarah Shabas, who is a soprano. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Great to have you. Thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. And a great opportunity for us to showcase 13 Strings and to showcase yourself, Sarah. Give us a little background. Tell us about yourself. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So I'm a soprano. I'm from Toronto and yeah, I grew up singing. I've sung all over Canada. So I've sung with Vancouver Opera and over in Victoria Opera, Manitoba. Uh, I sing a lot of different styles of repertoire. I sing opera, obviously, but I also sing a lot of singers who sing Baroque music as I do oh, also sing yeah. a lot of contemporary music. So I do a lot of Baroque and contemporary. Um, yeah. And uh, how, did, how did you find out about 13 Strings here in Ottawa? So I first worked with Kevin Mallon, who's the conductor of 13 Strings Orchestra, when I was quite a young artist. I think it was my one of my first ever opera productions. I was in, it's called uh, Venus and Adonis by John Blow. Okay. Who predates Handel and Purcell. And I played Cupid in that when I was about 18, and Kevin conducted that. And he got in touch with me this summer, said he'd been following my career and invited me to come and join him for this concert. Well, let's talk about this concert coming up December 6th. How, how would you describe this particular concert? Yeah, so this is a very festive concert. I think it'll really appeal to people that love going to Handel's Messiah. So we're doing um, Handel Chando's Anthems, which is kind of like an oratorio, like the Handel's Messiah, but in miniature form. So it's for a mix of choir and orchestra and soloists. And then they're also doing a bunch of holiday carols, some arranged by Ralph Vaughan Williams, who's celebrating the 150th anniversary of his birth this year. Um, some Bach, I'm doing a beautiful Bach cantata with 13 strings as well. So yeah, very festive. People that love classical music, that love carols, that love Baroque music, it will definitely appeal. And uh, an opportunity for the audience to participate as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the concert, after they've been sitting and watching all of us sing, we're going to invite them to sing with us. Oh, what a great that experience. Oh, that fun. is going to be a magical experience. Um, you know, as I said, you know, 13 Strings has been on the show many times in the past, Sarah, but um, for people that aren't familiar with 13 Strings, uh, tell everybody at home a little bit about them. Yeah, so I believe 13 Strings Orchestra, this is my first time singing with them too, but... Uh, they are. They were formed in the 70s, I believe, by Brian Law from musicians that played with the National Arts Centre Orchestra. And they're a smaller group, as the name suggests, uh, but I think they do a whole wide range of repertoire. They definitely do a lot of early music, as we will be doing in this concert, but they've also done contemporary and later works. So yeah, they're, it's a treat. So it's professional musicians, but a smaller group doing really specialized stuff. And and thirteen strings, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it it it's it's exactly what exactly. what they say they are, right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Uh, just reading some of your background, sir, I thought it was really intriguing that you've you've recently become a certified yoga instructor. Um, but beyond that, you, you've specialized in something that I think is very unique. T tell me a little bit about it. Mm. Oh, sure. Yeah. So I'm really interested in restorative yoga. So I know a lot of us are familiar with yoga and all the fancy poses that you can see on Instagram, but restorative yoga is all about finding ways to help the body to relax. So tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system. So out of fight or flight, as some people say, which is sympathetic to rest and digest, which is parasympathetic. So we use props that we lie on. Um, I taught a class recently focusing on respiration, which is very applicable to my life as a singer because right. having the body completely ready for deep breathing is pretty integral to what I do. So it makes sense that I could I could teach that, but it also you know helps people release tension and relax. I was going to ask yeah. you, yeah, because you know you must have to maintain your your voice in in particular ways. Obviously, this is something that you found, but but what other ways do you do you use? You know, as far as maintaining your voice and making sure that you know you're you're ready to go each and every performance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, every singer is different. Yoga is definitely a big part of my process. Um, and if not yoga, like anything to keep the body feeling sort of limber and releasing tension as much as possible. I'll also do uh, self-massage. Like I'll even massage my, my larynx and my muscles in my neck. 
um, yeah, and the occipital ridge, all these muscles that connect to like the vocal apparatus and help the, the soft palate be nicely lifted. And yeah, so I'll do that. I'll also drink a lots of fluids, try to get enough sleep. I'm a big fan of coffee, which is unfortunate. <laughs> you don't want to have too much coffee yeah. before a performance. Yeah, you're not alone yeah. in that. You're not alone in that. No matter what industry you're in, I think a lot of a lot of us find ourselves in in that and certainly in that position. Um, you know, just also, I, I don't think people understand either um, what an incredible performer. You, you've won so many awards over the years. I imagine, you know, in, in performing, it's taking you to different travels. Have, have you been able to travel around the world? What, what has that experience been like? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a big part of the job is traveling. I always call myself a nomad. Like, my right. norm <laughs> is not staying in one place. Um, so... Before the pandemic, I was living in Vienna because I was working with the famous Canadian tenor, Michael Schada, out there. I had a grant to go and study with him and to work with a Baroque orchestra in Vienna, wow. which was amazing because that's sort of like the mecca of classical music. Of course. You know, it's where Mozart and all of them lived and the culture is just so embedded in that rep. Um, but, you know, then and then I went and I, you know, I did this big tour in British Columbia and then ended up in Switzerland and now I'm living in Montreal and nice. so it's just it's a lot of travel and it's fun uh, what, a lot of variety what are your future nice plans af after this concert uh, what have you got lined up for the new year yeah absolutely uh, so I'm doing a, a fun version of Hansel and Gretel the Humperdinck opera nice which is happening in Montreal at the end of January I'm playing Gretel in that so getting ready to play a, a small child very cool. Um, I've got a CD coming out, my first album, which is uh, music written by the Nova Scotia composer Amy Brandon. You should check her out. She's fantastic. So well, you know what? We collaborate? Sarah, we yeah, have to have you those. come back on when you release that album, okay? So get back in touch with us. Sure. We really appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, that's Carlton Dominion Chalmers, uh, December 6th, 7.30 p.m.